What is up, what everyone? Paul from Timeless Productions here, and today we're going to be going for the Stone Sheafed Sword, and we're going to be showing the altars of how to get the Sword of Darkness and the Sword of Light with this exact sword. So, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a long one, but most of it can be done fairly early on in the DLC. The other, the Sword of Light, takes a little bit longer throughout the DLC in order for you to actually be able to get but for this DLC you can basically go anywhere from the start so it's not too much of a run through at all so starting off we're gonna go ahead and head to the catacombs we have to go to in order to get the stone sheaf sword which is the fog rift catacombs now from the very beginning of the DLC the first side of grace we're gonna go ahead follow the road all the way up here until we get to three path cross once we get to three path cross, we're going to go ahead, head over the bridge to castle front, and it's the front of the castle, Anise. Once we get there, we're going to head to the left, head into this little small cavern kind of area, and Fog Rift Catacombs is going to be right at the end of there. Now, if you follow the exact path I take inside of the catacombs, you can go ahead and grab this sword very, very easy and very fast. So we're going to go ahead, head through this tunnel right here. Watch out for the spike traps that do fall from the ceiling. They will do a ton of damage and can kill you. So we're going to head across from there. We're going to head into this room and we're going to make a right turn right over here and continue our way through here. Once we get over here to this um, tunnel, we're going to head down these stairs here and we're going to go ahead and take a direct left down another flight of stairs right over here. Here we're going to drop down, watch out again for the trap that will fall down. As you guys can tell, I got hit by it once and twice, which was absolutely insane. So again, make sure you're watching out for these traps as they're falling down. We're going to go ahead, head straight from where that is and head down these stairs right here. And there's going to be an elevator for you to go ahead and take now as you guys go ahead hop on to this elevator of course there is going to be at the very bottom of the elevator a stake of America in order for you to respawn here in case you do end up dying inside of the cavern or catacombs go ahead drop down here we're gonna head straight ahead through this area and we're gonna head to our left down another flight of stairs once again as we're heading through here, we do have another huge spike trap completely lines up the entire room. So make sure that you're using the gaps in the walls on the left and the right in order for you to avoid this trap. It will drop down a couple of times. It only dropped down twice for me before I got to the end. And once you get here, go ahead and kill off these enemies. They should be fairly simple and fairly easy for you to go ahead and kill. There is going to be a wizard right up here so make sure you kill him because he will do some long distance shots and we do need this area to be clear once you've killed all of the enemies we're gonna go ahead jump on to this railing and wait for the trap to fall down there is going to be that hole as you guys saw that we're gonna have to go ahead and jump into in order for us to jump into this that is why we have to jump on the railing once it drops down go ahead and make your jump and head into the hole and you're going to come out on this side. Now, once that happens, go ahead, wait for the trap to fall back down and jump on top of the trap. We're going to go ahead and walk to the other end. And on your right, you can see the hole in the wall right over here, which is where the altar for the stone sheet sword is going to be. So go ahead, drop down right here and head over to the altar and grab yourself the stone sheathed sword now we need this in order for us to be able to turn the sword into the sword of darkness and the sword of light now we're going to go ahead and head over here to the ruins of unte which is right next to shadow keep we actually have to go to a certain area inside of shadow keep for us to go ahead and get here now from the area where you killed the golden hippopotamus during the DLC, if you didn't open up the shortcut on the right side, you will have to go to the left and go all the way around in order to get to the area that I'm about to be at. You have to go to this area for the main DLC so you're not going to miss it. Head up the stairs if you went to the right and once you get up here you're going to see the bridge that will lead further into Shadowkeep. On the left side is where we come from if you go all the way around when you first kill the hippopotamus. But we're going to go ahead and head over here to the right where the other burning boats are. 
to where this dead body is on the ground and we're gonna go ahead and head down the ladder once we head down the ladder we're gonna go ahead and head behind this waterfall and inside of this room is going to be a second ladder go ahead climb onto the ladder and head down this ladder once again now once you get to the bottom of this ladder there is going to be a room we have to go ahead and head into is right behind us right over there there's also a painting there for another quest and another item I do have a video on that for the Egon, uh, Egon's quest it's a full guide on how to do that we're gonna go ahead head through this room and we're gonna drop down right here and just follow this path all the way to the end at the very end of this path you're going to see a coffin that you can go ahead and rest in and this will take you to the area we have to be at once you get here which is the castle watering hole and the ruins of Unte we're gonna go ahead grab that grace if you haven't already and right over there is going to be the ruins now in the front of this area there is going to be a sleeping wicker man in order for you to go ahead and get rid of him you have to head on to the balcony on the left side and throw one of the hefty pots into the furnace thing on the top of his head in order to wake him up and then you can go ahead and head through here make sure that you do kill the wicker man of course once you head into the ruins though, right over here on the right side is going to be the other altar. This is the Altar of Darkness and that will grant you the Sword of Darkness right here. Now we're going to go ahead and head to the Ancient Ruins of Ra. Now this is a main area that you have to go through for the main bosses inside of the DLCs so you cannot miss this area. But we're going to go ahead and head here and we're going to go ahead and head to the first side of grace now over here at this coliseum is where we're gonna have to go this is where the altar of light is for us so go ahead and teleport to the site of grace which is the raw the ancient raw ruins east side, uh, side of grace once you get here go ahead and follow the main path that you would usually take in order for you to get through the ruins there is going to be a wicker man on the other side on my playthrough I killed all of the wicker mans so I didn't have to worry about it but make sure that you guys are aware and dodging his attacks as he's firing at you from the uh, cliffside right over there to our left but we're gonna go ahead head up this set of stairs right here and we're gonna go ahead and head over to the left side again this is going to be the path that you usually take when you're going through the ancient ruins so it's very hard to miss the initial path here heading through here there's going to be a little bit of a rock size gap right over here and on the opposite side of it is going to be a side of grace which is the ancient raw uh, ruins side of grace which is for the west side now once we get here we're gonna go ahead head into the uh, ruins as we would usually do and we're gonna head up the set of stairs that are right here watch out for the enemies that are throwing down these like red balls at you they will do a ton of damage once you get into this bigger room we're gonna go ahead and head over here to the right side and head right outside now once we get out here which is where the gazebos are and the Colosseum kind of like ruin area we're gonna go ahead and head directly across up these sets of stairs right here and we're gonna head into this part of the ruins now there is going to be those spider like creatures that will like send the weird web things at you so make sure that you're jumping and you're just moving through this as fast as you possibly can once you get to the end over here you're just gonna go ahead turn to the right there is going to be this giant room filled with more of those guys so again keep jumping keep moving and don't stop because they do a ton of damage and will throw you off of torrent once you get here we're gonna head over here to the bridge and you can walk over this invisible bridge right here even though it doesn't look like it you can and right ahead of us is going to be the altar of light which will turn our sword from the sword of darkness over to the sword of light now you can come back over to these altars at any time to switch them back and forth if you want to now once we get these we're gonna go ahead and show off how they work so for any faith builds you have to be 24 in order to use it and that is the sword of lights special ability now it does just hit like a regular straight sword if you're not using the special abilities so keep that in mind and uh, it doesn't do too much damage unless you're doing the special ability so again 
keep all of that in mind when you are going for these. They are cool weapons though. My favorite one though is the Sword of Darkness and that special ability, which I'll show you very soon. Now, base damage it does 93 plus 33, and that's without any faith for me. I actually had to use certain things in order to boost up my faith. But the Sword of Darkness' special ability does this really cool circular motion kind of thing, as you guys just saw. That is my favorite one. I think it's 10 times better than the Sword of Light's special ability. And it does take a very big chunk of FP, but even with my low FP that I have on my build, you could still get about 4 to 5 hits in with this special ability just by itself, which is absolutely amazing. And the Sword of Darkness, again, does the exact same amount of damage, just does it with the Darkness special ability instead of the Light special ability. So, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and see you guys in the next video. Hopefully this helped you guys get the Sword of Darkness and the Sword of Light inside of the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content. Goodbye, and remember to stay timeless.